Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jeff Shumlin, and I am one of the co-directors of Putney Student Travel. And it's a great pleasure to be joined today by one of my colleagues, Simone Levine, who actually organizes this photo workshop in New York and has led many, many programs for us and is a photographer herself. Um, Simone has an undergraduate degree from DePaul University in photography. She also has a master's from New York University in international education. So she is very familiar with Lower Manhattan. Um, and as I say, uh, she really came to us as an experiential educator. She has directed programs worldwide, many, many for us and for a collaboration we ran for 14 years with National Geographic, um, but for other organizations as well. She is extraordinarily well-traveled. And again, she is also a really accomplished photographer. And I think um, typical of the kinds of group leaders who will join this program, uh, there are sort of two levels of instruction here. Uh, one are these really dynamic, wonderful group leaders who also can teach photography. And then we have a photographer expert who joins the program. And in the, this particular case, it's Leslie deschler Kenosi, And Leslie, we are thrilled to have you join us as well this afternoon. Um, you will see a little glimpse of Leslie's work uh, in a moment or two when we turn it over to her. And um, I'll talk a little bit about her, a little bit more about her when we do so, but she has a long affiliation with the um, International Center of Photography in New York, which is really a world-class photo center, respected worldwide, and um, has unbelievable facilities. And we actually have a many, many time group leader who works in, uh, coordinating those facilities at the ICP. And that's one of the reasons that we're working uh, there this summer. Um, his name is Larson Harley, and Larson is a many, many time photo leader for us and has brought us to a collaboration with Leslie and, and with the ICP. Um, I'm gonna give a very brief history of Putney Student Travel. Uh, this is our 71st summer and the organization was founded by my parents, George and Kitty Shumlin uh, in 1951. My father is no longer with us, but was an educator. Uh, my mother at 91 is going strong. She is Dutch. And they were the classic post-war love story in that they literally fell in love after meeting, crossing the Atlantic on a boat in 1949 and married after spending all of two weeks together over the course of a year and a half, uh, most of it, which was a long distance relationship. Putney Student Travel grew out of that as they directed programs for the school where my father worked at the time and then uh, all that we do now around the world has grown out of that. We're located on an old dirt road in Vermont, which looks nothing like this today. It is gray and miserable, and we are in the heart of mud season, which is absolutely the worst possible time to come to Vermont. It is almost impossible to get to our office right now. The mud is so deep. Um, there are... Uh, I should say my co-director here is Peter Shumlin, my brother, and we have co-directed Putney Student Travel for almost 40 years now. In fact, I think it's 40 this year. And three years ago, we were joined by his daughters, Olivia and Rebecca. So we are now officially well into our third generation of Shumlins directing Putney Student Travel. But there are many, many more talented people under the roof of this barn than just Shumlins. We have about 30 people like Simone who come from backgrounds of art and education, Peace Corps. We have a licensed ship, ship's captain who is a marine biologist. And all of them are bringing their experience around the world and their passion to our programs. Um, today though, we really wanna focus on uh, this particular program in New York which as I say, is sort of the next generation of a program we've run there before with National Geographic that brings students for an intensive nine day program uh, to study photography. The ICP is kindly allowing us to use their facilities this year. And what you're seeing here is their brand new gallery. They have recently moved into just space with two floors of gallery space. This space this summer 
um, we'll be filled with a major exposition of the work of William Klein, who many of you may have heard of, a really famous photographer, American born, spent most of his life in France, known for both fashion photography and especially, I think, for really dynamic street photography, mostly black and white, but some color as well. If you look him up, you will undoubtedly recognize some of his images. It is going to be a tremendous atmosphere to serve as the base for this experience. And the curator of the ICP has offered to give us a private after hours visit of the Klein show this summer. So that's just a really exciting environment for the program. But the other reason we're there is that the ICP in their new facility has truly world-class facilities. This is one of the studios where we will be working. There are a few like this editing photos, it has overhead projectors, everything you can imagine. We're not doing wet darkroom photography as a part of this program, but it's all right there and gives you a sense of how extensive the facility is. This is a view from the outside where you see the first floor of exhibit space upstairs and then the second floor of the museum is above that. And all of the facilities we will be using to work are off to the side. Um, really just an amazing space filled with incredible photographers and um, just a great, great base for our New York workshop. I think at this point, I might talk briefly again about Simone and ask her to step in and talk a little bit about the structure of this program, where we stay, what we do, um, what it looks like uh, as she is really behind the scenes pulling the strings bringing it all together so simone i'll turn it over to you great thank you jeff and thanks for that sweet introduction uh, i just want to say i'm so grateful to be working on this program and with this collaboration uh, new york city is near and dear to my heart as jeff mentioned i went to graduate school there but also both my parents are from there so my whole upbringing it was like my second home uh, and so to get to develop this program here in the heart i really think of new york city as the heartbeat of the world uh, it's it's such an incredible backdrop for learning photography and experiencing all of the aspects of photography that anyone could even imagine. It's kind of a dream. So all that's to say that this is such a special program because the students are gonna be staying in college dorm rooms at Pace University down in lower Manhattan, really getting that like lower Manhattan feel being super close to the Brooklyn Bridge where we'll be waking up early in the morning and photographing the sunrise we kind of organize our days around the light. So we've got beautiful light. The light is lower, closer to the horizon in the mornings and in the evenings and afternoons for sunrise and sunset. We wanna be out and experiencing the city. So traveling a lot by foot, traveling by local transportation, uh, getting to explore the different boroughs and the different neighborhoods of New York City and spending most of our time really out and about and learning different photography techniques anywhere from learning about how to actually use your camera if you're a beginner so learning shutter speed and iso and aperture to then getting into composition learning about light both studio light and natural light and then learning about different types of topics photography ethics the difference between art photography and photojournalism so a lot of that's out in the field, but then we also, as Jeff mentioned, have this incredible access to the ICP facilities. So we'll get to be in the classroom on our computers, learning how to organize photos, learning how to edit photos, learning even how to print large format photos. That's something that we feel so blessed to have access to these amazing printers that are here for us to, to play with and for us to actually as we can see here in this image, be able to print our final prints for the final gallery exhibition, which is something that is unique to our photography workshops. We have access to this space here at ICP in a gallery space that will be an open public exhibition on the final night of our program. The students will be working with the ICP expert with Leslie, which we are just thrilled to be working with. She'll be able to be there with us 
for almost the entirety of the program to help students edit and select and work to find their final image that represents their experience working in New York City, learning photography, and working alongside the instructors, because we'll have several instructors who are also professionals in the field. They're professional photographers, they're professional educators. And so all together, the students have this experience to learn about photography, to work with some of the best photographers in, in the country, really, uh, and have access to the facilities that would otherwise just not be available. So yeah, that that's kind of the, the general overview of the program. I, I can't, I could probably talk about it honestly for hours. So I'm trying to be brief here and happy to answer questions in the end, but the days are packed. The passion is high and there's no better backdrop than New York City to learn photography. Oh, and one, one other thing I do wanna make sure that people understand is that whether you're a beginner and you've never picked up a camera before, or you are years of studying photography and are planning or already are a professional photographer, even at a young age, all levels are welcome. And we really work and our instructors work to cater towards those individual students and help them grow and continue to expand upon their skill sets. So we're excited Thanks. to have this program. Thanks. That's great, Simone. Do you want to just touch on sort of the course of a typical day before we move on? Like we get up, sure. you've talked about shooting early and late, but what are we doing in the rest of the day in the evenings, things like that? Yeah, yeah. So we, like I said, we kind of structure our days around light and usually in the middle of the day, the sun is high and the shadows are big and it's not the greatest time for shooting, but that's also a really great time for us to get into the classroom, have some lessons and also have some presentations and talks from Leslie. Uh, so that's, that's just a really good time to be editing photos and working to start to select the photos that we're working on. Um, so you can kind of imagine like the first part of the day and the last part of the day is out and about. And then the middle part of the day is typically when we're going to be more inside the classroom and working to, to parse through some of those photos. We also do photo critiques where we show the photos and we get expert, uh, feedback from our both our instructors as well as our expert. And then also students are in, involved in that feedback, both giving constructive and positive feedback to the other students and their work. And all of that is to continue. So each day we're kind of like moving closer and closer to that final exhibition. Uh, but you can imagine just using your feet, getting out, seeing the city. We, we even do some excursions to different boroughs and different places, like going to Coney Island and photographing like one of the most epic photograph place in New York City, um, to, like I said, the Brooklyn Bridge or going into Chinatown, going into Central Park, um, and really just being active and out and, and learning by doing. Thanks. We also have the opportunity to visit some other museums with great photo collections to go to galleries. We have a connection, for example, at Pace Gallery, where they receive us and show us around a bit. Um, so during the day, there's editing, there's meeting with Leslie, there's all sorts of absorbing of art. We might on one night go out to a show after dinner or something, but sometimes we get back on the computers after dinner and actually work on editing for the next day. Um, it's a really intensive photo experience. So great, Simone. Thank you. Um, I want to turn it over to Leslie, and I just want to emphasize again how incredibly lucky we feel to have you involved in this project, Leslie. You were introduced to us by the head of education at the ICP, and uh, when I first chatted with you, I just was so excited by the possibility of collaborating with you, and we're so pleased that you're joining us. Um, Leslie is, as I mentioned, on the faculty of ICP and has a particular interest or has had a particular experience with running youth um, photo education programs. She's also taught at Columbia University at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. She's taught in Italy. Um, she is herself just an extraordinarily talented photographer and I think she's going to share a few of her images with us but I would urge you to go find her website afterwards to see a lot more there's a lot there and she is not only an incredibly talented person but a warm and wonderful person who I think students will really connect with in a great way this summer so Leslie thanks for doing this and thanks for being with us today thank you wow 
a beautiful welcome. I appreciate it so much. So thank you. So I think we'll just take a couple minutes to check out some of the work that I've done in my personal practice, and then we'll pivot back to you know what we're thinking about doing um, this summer. But thank you so much, um, Jeff and Simone and everyone. I feel really welcome. This incredible program that I've had my eyes on for many, many years. Some of my former students have gone through the you know different Putney pr programs. So I've heard incredible things and now it's uh, totally confirmed by this experience so far. So just quickly, um, my background, I also started as a teenager. So 15 years old in high school, I took my first photo class and immediately got the bug. And the first assignment was something to do with shadow and light. And I was hooked. And Simone, you did such a beautiful job of describing the New York City light. I love that you highlighted that early morning, afternoon and night. Um, so I've been doing this for a really long time. Um, I went to art school, my undergraduate, and then my graduate degree some years later at MICA, the Maryland Institute, where I did more photography. Um, but primarily, I've been um, teaching at the International Center of Photography, um, gosh, maybe 12 years or so. Um, and in that time, I my early work before this work was more involved in museums and museum archives. I did it. I worked in conservation technician for years and had access to archives and, and behind the scenes museum. Then what happened? Then I had a family and the choice was, so this is where this work comes from. Um, at that point, I wasn't able to go and do that deep research anymore and have that amount of time. So naturally the choice was for a lot of artists was you know either find a way to work or don't work. So this is something really dear, close to my heart that I turned the camera towards my family and started looking at um, intimacy and domestic life. And this work was started in about 2012. Um, I'm slowly still working in this way. Also, my creative practice has shifted a bit to curatorial practice and editing and writing about photography. Um, but these are some of the, the main images early on. And I wanted to highlight this too. And this one in particular, we can stay here for just a second. My son is now nine. Um, <laughs> this is Mateo. Um, when I was younger, I was really connected to one camera right? One thing, and it had to be a certain way, and I always was really rigid. And then you find yourself in a different part of life, and you realize you can't have the same amount of time or access or equipment. So I actually did this one with a point and shoot, which sounds really maybe silly to people on the call or maybe some students, but I'm really a big um, supporter of whatever tool you have, you use it, and whatever situation you're in, you find a way to to work through those creative blocks and, and just keep working. And that's something that I really love experiencing with young, younger students and teen students in particular, to give yourself that grace and really take, you know, take, um, you know, a step up to those challenges and use whatever tools you have to the best of your ability. And you can really find some, some, some beautiful breakthrough moments there. Um, yeah, so that probably sounds a little bit silly, but for me to pick up a point and shoot and take a picture of a dirty sink was a big deal. And it actually has been one of my more successful images in my entire career. So, so we can move on from this one, but thank you. <laughs> and then these are a little bit more recent of my, my two children. I do summer portraits of them in this style um, every year. And then finally um, on the Hudson River, which is a place we love so much. But this project is called Domestic Negotiations. It's very much ongoing. It's very much about um, being a, both a, a parent and an artist and making that work. And, and um, uh, it's opened up a lot of really interesting conversations um, throughout with my colleagues as well. And um, so this is my, some of my personal work, but I wanted to pivot quickly to this work. Um, so in addition to being an educator, so I've been at ICP for, like I said, about 12 years, primarily working with teens also adults, but my um, heart and focus has always been in teen programming where I've helped, you know, write curriculum and, and uh, execute many, many, many classes over the years, including our one-year program, which is a really intensive called Image Makers, where we get to work really deeply with students over about a nine-month period. So some of these photographs, although we have a short time together this summer, many of these things will be touched upon in the classroom together. So looking at your images, printing images, as Simone said, um, critiques, which is constructive and um, uh, thoughtful criticism. We teach those things on how to speak about work and how to talk about one another's work. Um, and these are just some, I put some fun images here at the end of being out in the field. Listen, you can do this anywhere. Anywhere in New York City, we can just like bring out our reflectors and start talking to people or talk to one another, whatever our comfort zone is. The one on the right was um, a creative workshop making zines 
and doing photographs together. It was a way to kind of get creative juices flowing. And the one on my left is um, some lights we set up outside of ICP in a tent and just did partner or portraits of anyone that walked by. So I don't know exactly what we'll be doing up to together. We'll have to like, you know, really co-create. I'm very much into like hearing from the students and seeing what they would like to do. And, um, but that just gives you a little bit of a taste of that. And then as you can see in the background, I'm in my studio right now. I'm also a professional printer. So I do, so I very much have for 10 or 12 years, I think about 10 years, been printing for museums and exhibitions and galleries. So you're in very good hands when we get to that last part, that pop-up exhibition, which I'm super thrilled. I think it's a really incredible and unique opportunity to learn how to print and execute a show um, in a quick turnaround because it's very much what it's like at times as an artist um, to get things done. Um, so I don't know what else to cover, but that's a quick, I'm just so delighted to be here. I bring a lot of different things to this role in um, you know, working with young people and really thinking about what they're interested in and hearing from them and building relationships within the peer structure of the classroom and co-creating. Um, and also one thing I should lift is I'm really just a big um, photo nerd about photo history. So Simone is absolutely right. This is the place street photography, whether you'd like to do that or not, is something that we can really get into the history of that in this town. Um, and also fine art photography. It sounds like we already have some great connections with Pace and other places. And we'll talk about the ethics of journalism. All of those things um, are things that I'm very passionate about and we'll, we'll get into in the classroom. So thank you. <laughs> That's great, Leslie. Thank you. These students are gonna be so lucky to work with you. And you mentioned a couple of things that I wanna pick up. One is that momentum builds as this nine day period reaches its show at the end and that Leslie and the group leaders will be leading really positive critique sessions, but ultimately helping to curate the one image that gets ch chosen for that show, which is a big process and going through it with someone with your experience, um, just there's so much to learn just going through that sort of editing down and eliminating and, uh, you know, all the challenges and that many students as a result will come out with a small portfolio of work, even if it doesn't all get shown in the show, that they can take home with them and use for, for other purposes. So you Absolutely. also mentioned the history of photography, and I want to point out that ICP has one of the most incredible libraries of photo books. It's literally two stories high with ladders that you slide along. I mean, there are thousands of extraordinary photo books in this amazing space. And uh, I loved visiting it and uh, I'm sure students will as well. So Leslie, thank you for your sharing your perspective and thank you for being with us. Um, before we go to questions, just a few Final thoughts about the process here. We work on a rolling admissions basis, which means if you're interested in applying, you go to our website, you hit the apply now button, and it leads you through a very easy first stage of putting in background information and choosing the program and putting in a $700 deposit by credit card. We then hold the space for you tentatively and invite you back in to put in the email addresses of two teachers who know you well at school. And if one of them is a photo, teacher even better, though it's not required. And you go in and you write just a short little statement, a couple of paragraphs about your interest in this and what you feel you can contribute to the experience. Um, as soon as those references come back, we make a decision and get back to you. But we hold your space tentatively while the application is being processed. So you're not penalized if your teachers are on vacation and slow to get back to us or something like that. The other thing I want to mention is that we love talking to people by phone a video, whatever. You've got the phone number on the screen there. If you have specific questions that we don't get to today, please call us and we'd be happy to talk to you, Simone and I and others know the program well, and to tell you more about it. Um, yeah, I think let's, uh, let's ask Rebecca if there are any questions to address. There aren't currently, so if anyone okay. has any questions, um, go ahead and drop them in that Q&A box. But uh, I was wondering, Simone, if you could touch on what equipment students should be prepared to bring. Sure. Uh, yes, so we 
we ask that students bring a camera that they feel comfortable using, preferably a mirrorless or a DSLR camera that has manual capabilities. One of the main things that we like to teach is how to use the tool that you have, which I actually really appreciate what you said about that, Leslie. Um, so much of it is about being able to, to use what you have and understand all of the capacities of the tool that you have. So if you have a mirrorless or a DSLR camera that has manual capabilities, we want you to bring that. Um, and then in terms of lenses, there's a range of different lenses that you could bring. We do ask that students bring a laptop so that they can be working on their photos to both edit and select and also curate for the final show. Like I said, we teach Lightroom and Photoshop so that students can be working on that process throughout the program. Um, and then because we're walking around the city, you're carrying all your stuff, you definitely want to have a comfortable backpack to be or, you know, a hip pack or something like that to have with you. Um, and then any other kind of uh, external hard drive for saving your photos. That's one of the, the biggest lessons that I've learned as a photographer is you want to back up and back up again because uh, you don't want to lose those precious photos that you're taking. That's kind of the main gist. But then once you do get accepted to the program, you will have a big old list that will tell you all of the different, you know, nitty gritty of the particular things to bring in terms of camera gear. Uh, and then that will give you also suggestions. If you don't have a camera yet, what are some suggestions that we might have or some specific lenses that we might recommend for students? Yeah. It shouldn't be necessary if you don't have a huge array of lenses and things to buy a lot of equipment though. Um, we will make do with what you've got. There is a great show at ICP right now upstairs with the photographs of young photographers from around the world all shot on iPhones. And it's quite amazing, actually. So. All right. Yeah, and I was gonna, I'll just add to that too, because I, I wanna actually further emphasize what Leslie said. Um, I know when I teach the photo workshops, I love to have even just the first day be just on your iPhone or just on your point and shoot so that you're learning about how to actually capture light and capture composition without having to use all of the settings. It's like, how do you get comfortable with the tool that you have first? And then we can get more detailed. But so much of it is, is about like using your body instead of your lens to get closer to your subject. That's great, thank you. All right, I think that's it for questions. Great, I just wanna thank you, um, Simone and Leslie and Rebecca behind the scenes for joining me in this today. And it's always terrible at the end of a webinar like this because someone kills the screen and everyone disappears. And Leslie and Simone, we will connect by email, but this has been really great. And I certainly feel inspired and wanna do it myself. So mm. thank you for making your time available and uh, summer's coming. Really yes, exciting. summer's coming. I got really excited about summer here and all about it and seeing all these beautiful photographs. So thank you so much. I'm really just so delighted to be here. So great. thank you. Thank you for joining us, great. everyone. Great yes, thank you for joining. A couple people have popped up and said that um, they arrived late and would like the recording and that will go out to you tomorrow. All right, have a great night.